This is Twit. So uh, let's start with a recap of what Dolby Atmos is. It's been out in the commercial cinemas for a couple of years at least, and uh, now it's uh, becoming available in the home for the home theater. So uh, either one of you can can start off. Tell me what uh, what exactly is Dolby Atmos? What are we talking about here? You know, Scott, I think one of the things that really differentiates Dolby Atmos um, is that we have abandoned this idea of channels, both in the cinema as well as in the home theater. Uh, for years now, mixers have been um, – have had to take individual objects, individual sound objects, and mix them into a channel-based configuration, 5.1, eventually 7.1. And regardless of how well they did that, uh, the accuracy and placement of the signal was not always the best it could be. Uh, we hear in a three-dimensional space, and a channel-based environment is, is generally very, very flat in its presentations. And in rethinking the cinema and obviously rethinking the home theater, we really had to go back to the drawing boards and really think about, you know, how content creators actually create and position sounds within the home theater and within the cinema. And literally, we went back to the very, very beginning to how sounds are created. Sounds are created as individual objects that are positioned within a three-dimensional space as we hear them. And I think what makes Dolby Atmos very, very different from everything that we've done in the past is we now free up those audio objects to travel throughout that entire three-dimensional space and be defined within that three-dimensional space uh, as an object, as a sound, as an explosion, as a helicopter going over. Um, literally, we have liberated sound from the confines, if you will, of a channel-based playback environment. Mm -hmm. and, and let's make sure that everybody understands what objects are. As you say, the, the examples include a helicopter or an explosion or somebody talking or... Uh, any any sound emitting object. Yes, Brett. An object can be any sound in a scene. So uh, it could be the sound of a car's engine, a helicopter, a bird. And in Atmos, that sound object is audio, but then it's accompanying metadata that um, tells it where to begin in the scene and where to travel throughout the scene. So it's um, information that is um, added by the film mixer to generate and create a three-dimensional sound field with mm -hmm. objects. And what's really cool that I've, from what I've seen is that the sound mixer, the person who is assembling all of these <laughs> objects into a soundtrack for a movie, uh, can actually steer the object around the room with something like a joystick or a trackpad or something like that uh, and actually move the object around. And in this case, he doesn't, he or she doesn't have to worry about what channels uh, it has. it's going to be reproduced by. It's simply where is it in the 3D space. And the Dolby Atmos system takes care of having whichever speakers are most appropriate to play that sound as if it were coming from that location in space. Have I got that right? Exactly. So every theater has a Dolby Atmos renderer, and that renderer knows the intimate details of that theater where the speakers are, how many there are, and what their capabilities are. And then when the Atmos mix is played back in that theater, at the time of presentation, it's a custom mix for that room. And that's why a cinema that has 3,000 seats with 64 speakers can have the same experience with as a small theater with 24 speakers. So it's not about the number of speakers or channels. It's really the representation of the desires of the film mixer. 